Let's flip the script. Completely forget what we just said there. Mr. Hyde. Grant, let's be real here. Let's, let's be, be real. real. Keep let's it real. Talk real. Yeah. The 49ers just gave up two additional first round picks to draft the future of the franchise. Yeah. He's starting week one and Jimmy's gone. It's, yeah. it's just the reality of it, right? Yeah. You gave up too much for the rookie not to start in week one. It's, it's just the facts. The pressure is there. You mortgage the farm. He has to start. He needs the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Secondly, QBs drafted in the top three historically have almost all played at some point in year one. I went back over the last 21 years, right? And, and looked at the various ones taken in the top three, one, two, or three. And in the last 21 years, all of them, except for one, have started at least one game in there. Was it Carson year. Palmer who didn't start? It Carson was Palmer? indeed Carson Palmer, sir. Yes, indeed. Bengals nice. did it right and then messed up that relationship. That's <laughs> talent. That's yeah. talent to, That's right. to do it right and then mess it up. Yes, but anyway, absolutely. So so you know that you draft him that high because you, you want him to start now, and he can start now. You don't take him in, in the first three picks if he can't start immediately. Right. And then, you know, Jimmy's trade value is 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 never going to be higher than it is right now. And let's be honest, it's not that high to begin with. Right. But you know that the rookie's coming in to, to play at some point, and then Jimmy's a backup. And now the Niners have no leverage, and any team that wants him can lowball them all day. And you're not going to get back what you would have, a potential second or third this year, by letting him go. And then lastly, Jimmy should want out as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean – Jimmy should want to get away from this abusive relationship where he's constantly paraded in front of the fans and kind of left hanging throughout mm -hmm. all of this and get a fresh start somewhere where he can develop a new relationship with the staff, get the fans behind him again, rebuild his confidence like he needs to. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like it's it's a no-brainer to let him go on and do that. He's been good to the organization. The organization needs to be good to him. And then you look at Sudfeld, the move today, that's a great backup. That, that to me, signals exactly what we're looking at here. <laughs> Jimmy out, Sudfeld in as the backup, start the rookie. Also, we, we talked about it earlier. It's, it is a, they're in a win-now mode. Yes. And trading all these picks for a player who's not ready to contribute at all this year doesn't seem to really jive with what they've been doing all offseason. It seems like they're trading up with the intention of getting a quarterback that they feel is better than Jimmy Garoppolo right now. And I think that's why so many insiders nationally and locally are just convinced that the Niners are going to draft Mac Jones because Alabama's offense is like the 49ers offense. Mac Jones is similar physically to Jimmy Garoppolo. It's just, mm -hmm. he's a much more decisive, quick thinking, more accurate quarterback. At least he looks that way on film. So if the, if the target is Mac Jones, they don't, they don't need to sit him on the bench. Their attitude is he won the national championship last year. He didn't fold in the biggest game the way Jimmy Garoppolo did. He, I mean, it's like, it's not like Jimmy Garoppolo gives us a uh, writes our ticket to a Super Bowl victory. He had his chance. So had his who's chance. To, who's to say Mac Jones couldn't do better? I think if they get Mac Jones, which is what everyone expects, then Jimmy Garoppolo is redundant. He's uh, seen as not even as good as the rookie. And what's the point of keeping him at that point? Just – move them to Washington or New England, or I'm sure there's a bunch of teams that would be interested in him. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Get yeah. what you can and then use that to, to grab another asset. Again, back to your point of we are a Super Bowl contender. You're going to start a rookie. He better start week one so that by week 17, he has experience and you better get him as many darn weapons as you can. Keeping a PG friendly, family friendly here, as many darn weapons as you can, because he's going to need them. Right. Yes. And, and, and that second or that third round pick, that could be a big time third receiver. That could be a second tight end. Maybe not Kyle Pitts. But a starting be, running back. A they, starting, they, they, ooh, they've been in contact goodness. with Najee Harris. I mean, imagine Najee Harris on the 49ers. Oh, really good. Sweet. So, yeah. So, I mean, they could do all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Agreed. Michael says, do you see the Niners pulling a move out of left field and drafting Sewell? You see how good you see how good he's a fit for Kyle's run scheme. Kyle can run that. Oh, I, so I think we may have a difference of opinion on a certain right tackle for the mm -hmm. San Francisco 49ers. Um, I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded. 
So I, let me let me preface it by saying that uh, I agree that 2020 was painful to watch, at the it least. Was. It, was. it really was. Uh, but I see the potential there. And so I think that to me, if you're going to invest in the offensive line early, I'm definitely going guard with the idea of shifting to to center. I, I think mm. in my mind, you're attempting to find Alex Mack's replacement with the idea that he's a bridge to whomever you're, you're grooming. Makes sense. And, you know, if you could give McGlinchey one more chance, if he doesn't improve this year, bounce back, you can handle it next year. Yeah, and great article on uh, SI about eating the $10 million for for the right tackle being the right move. I agree with that. I think that it's a palatable amount, especially if you have moved on from a, a certain $25 million contract.